Boy Stephen Knight, welcome to the Stephen Knight Show. Hope you're having a great Monday. I'm gonna try to make it a little bit better for you right now. We're back with the latest in sports, fashion, movie reviews, and of course the best indie music out there. Uh, then we welcome a up and coming actor, Fernando Reyes, who is doing big things. He's here to discuss his career, what he's achieved already, and where he sees his career going. Can't wait for you to hear that interview. And then in hot topics, we're talking about everything everyone's talking about. The coronavirus is dominating everything. And then Gail King, she spoke out uh, over the weekend about her infamous interview with Lisa Leslie, where she brought up the whole Kobe Bryant uh, sexual assault charges. She had an interview with Oprah on Oprah's tour. Um, and so we're going to talk about that. Listen, remind you, we're all over social media, Facebook, Instagram, and of course, our website, thestephenisshow.com. When we come back, the question of the day and hot topics right back after this. Senegal, kept it light, couple drinks, kicking in my car. Was chilling with some older folks, kinda chilly, help you button up your overcoat. Hold the toast, bottle like half a brick. Schoolgirl, why your Kim study Latin lit? Passionate, love to help the less fortunate. Triple threat, had them all without a gorgeousness. Homesick, talking about she love the snow. Different places that her mother and her cousins go. Bungalows, wanna hide like one of those. Do nothing, run around in the underclothes. Summer glow, back home, sipping over yo. Road to riches, she acting like she know the road. Showing you things I ain't supposed to show. Next winter, we skiing in the broken nose. And in my mind, I'm really hoping so. Mind sex, I bond, it's so emotional. Simple life, top down on the open road. Black and white, like when J Mac loads you low. Pops and toe. Real lies, he was just being a dad, though. Like Castro, mom's name Cassandra. To this day, yeah, she still make the best lasagna. There's nothing left for me to ponder. Beat you with a bow like it's a privilege and an honor. We at the penthouse in Palazzo. In the Venetian, we was next to El Chapo. Now we lost out in Cabo. The greedy ass, you a fiend for a taco. Just got those books, she like to read a lot. In the water on them jets like the ski a lot. Tequila shots, bad and bougie on the radio. That Jose got her acting like she Quavo. For the pesos, hit me with a pole dance. Made it rain, we got a different type of romance. In the air, love it when you slow dance. She a stallion, she ride, I'm using both hands. Both plan to enjoy this little odyssey. Beach hop to avoid the monotony. Nostradamus, seen it like a prophecy. Mrs. Long, yeah, I'm thinking quite possibly. They look at us like we are novelty. Pop out and paparazzi on the property. It's 
coming out. I overcame all the drama now. I'm going strong on my bounce back. My setback got me on track. Now every day it's a new task. Face my fears covered up underneath the mask. I had to ease my mind from the crazy shit. Adjusted for the perfect fit. Scars from my past, split surrounded with the counterfeit. All I need in this life is me. No stress, no pain, feel free. Look around, up and down, can't you see? All I need, all I need is me. Let me catch the grips. Control my attitude, let me lock my lips. And when they pop the clips, I push the anchor down, then I rock the ship. Yo, I've been smoking steady, tripping, get the sip and told them, listen, they ain't ready for the petty. When I dodge it, I stay ready, fatal humble, keep it heavy, stay low key. Call me shady, I ain't with it, I ain't with it. Tell them critics, I ain't with it. It was kind of hard for me to see. Dreaded pain turn to misery. Lack of love in the families. Jealousy from my enemies. I had to keep it going. Show the weight, maxed out, keep it flowing. Uh. Then I rise above it. Bragging rights, longer nights, I put nothing for it. Chup, chup. All I need in this life is me. No stress, no pain, feel free. Look around, up and down, can you see? All I need, all I need is me. All I need in this life is me. No stress, no pain, feel free. Look around, up and down, can you see? All I need, all I need is me. Yeah. All I need, all I need is. Uh. Yo. Uh. Ain't nobody out here living for me. Ain't nobody out here living for me. Uh. Nah. Ain't nobody out here living for me. Ain't nobody out here living for me. Yo. Uh. Ain't nobody out here living for me. Ain't nobody out here living for me. Uh. Uh. Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Chica Evans is me and you tonight. How you feeling? I'm feeling pretty good. How about yourself? I can't complain. I can't complain. You had a good weekend? I did. I had a good weekend. It's been beautiful weather up here. Oh, nice. Uh, a couple of my clients came through. It's just been a, it's just a good weekend. Cannot can't, complain. Can't, can't beat that. Can't beat that. No. Yeah. That, um, my weekend was cool. I, I hung out actually on Saturday that daylight savings time threw me completely off. <laughs> I was supposed to go meet uh, with some friends, including Miss Parker, for her birthday, and it just didn't work out right. So, hopefully, we can reschedule <laughs> this week. But yeah, if you don't know by now, really, I, 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 how, how did it throw you off? How? Because so anyone that knows me knows I sleep in on weekends because I get up so early during the week, and so mm-hmm. I was up on the phone late on Saturday night. So I woke up. It was like past the lunchtime like lunch was already happening the lunch i was supposed to go to oh wow and i was like oh my gosh <laughs> and so i tried to call and text everybody no one responded <laughs> but i actually had a good day in the house i uh called my family members different family members and just kind of cut up with them and everything so i don't know maybe i needed that day but uh andrea and miss parker happy belated birthday sorry i missed it and hopefully we can reschedule Alright, well, um, the question of the day is, what makes you happy? What makes you happy, Chica? Uh, I'm happiest when I have peace of mind. Mm. Um, I've, 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 you know, at this stage in the game, you know, uh, you know, I've, I've seen a couple 
you know, revolvings around the earth. And um, I don't really have any drama in my life. Yeah, yeah. Like to the point where, you know, if people's voices are being raised, it's it's a little agitation Mm. involved because Mm. I don't know, I don't have that in my space. Yeah. So that peace of mind, that's where it is for me right now. Peace of mind brings me happiness. I yeah. love that. I love that. I love to see good things happen to people that I know. Like yeah. you know, yeah, people yeah, get yeah. their job or they or just to see that smile on their face, that genuine smile. I love to see that. But let me get your opinion. Um so I haven't discussed this, but I have a friend of mine who I've been friends with very a very long time, right? And uh recently I found out that, that person was not who I thought they were. I found mm-hmm. that they have a ex- extreme criminal past. And that pretty much everything that they, well, a lot of what they told me was a lie. I just found it out. And so for me, I can't, you know, and the good thing is we don't really hang out that much anymore and not anything happened, but we just don't, you know what I mean? It just, you know, life happened or whatever, but we still, you know, we're still in touch here and there, but I'm not a fake person. And so it's hard for me to continue Mm -hmm. to act like I don't know what I know. So how would you deal with that situation, do you think? Uh well, I did mean, you address it? <laughs> okay, so that situation has happened with me, mm-hmm. and to me, the person you really don't know that person. That person yeah. is considered yeah. a confidant and a friend, a very is close not friend, who they portrayed themselves to be. Yeah, so you don't know who they are. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. in knowing that information, in knowing my personality. I would slowly but surely start to pull away. Yeah. But again, like I, I've seen a few revolving you know, around the earth, mm-hmm. I'm at a different mm-hmm. point right now. So I feel like I would need to address why I'm removing myself from your space. Yeah. Just yeah. so that, and, and I believe in education. Mm-hmm. And not that I need to teach everyone, but maybe the next time around you'll think about this situation, so I need to tell you about it. So you don't do this again in the future, and maybe you can have a relationship that will be with this probably could have been. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I feel like I need to say something, but it's like... Um, it's and just, then you need to say it for your peace of mind, because right, then you yeah. know how people do. You'll remove yourself, or you'll fade away, and then, I don't know what Stephen did, I don't mm-hmm. know why he did yep. this, and blah, blah, yep. blah, blah, blah. Yep. Clear the air right now, get it clear, so they understand, so there'll be none of that. Yeah. And I'm at the point in my life now, I, I you know, I don't like a guessing game. What you know exactly what happened, you know what I mean? But um, yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, well, pray for me. <laughs> but tweet us at home, let us know uh, what makes you happy. Stephen S. Show, SHL. All right, well, um, the coronavirus outbreak is increasingly um, deadly health concern worldwide. And the hardest hit country in the midst of it all is, is Italy. Italy has officially implemented a total lockdown. Um, as the number of coronavirus in the country are inching close to 10,000 people. Now, CNN reports that Italy has put under a total lockdown as the Prime Minister Conti announced that he is extending restrictions already currently in place in north region of the country. At a press conference on this weekend, Conti said that all of the uh, measure, I'm sorry, all the measure of the red zones are now extended to all the national territory. Um, he also explained that Italy will move forward with a complete ban of all public events. Now, under the initial lockdown rules, schools, universities, theaters, cinemas, and bars, and nightclubs were closed in uh, North Italy. Additionally, religious ceremonies, including funerals and weddings, and sporting events were suspended or postponed. Meanwhile, local restaurants and bars were allowed to be open from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., and malls and markets could open on weekdays if they were sure that um, the meter of distance between each client to so make sure that, you know, there, there was the risk wasn't that bad. Um, however, with the stricter measures in place, these places will likely be closed for unforeseeable future. What do you think? Do you think that Italy is doing the right thing? Um, or do you think that, um, you know, it's extreme? I will say this, 97 people have died from coronavirus coronavirus in Italy in the last 24 hours. So do you think that this, this restriction is, is uh, warranted? 
Well, I mean, because they they don't really fully understand it, mm -hmm. they're trying to circumvent that, you know, by the the whole um, separation. Yeah. And they want people to stay at home. They don't want kids to go to school. Um, they want everyone to stay indoors and, and no communication. Yeah. I mean, not just communication. No contact. That's You're right. Right, right, right. No contact. So, I mean, because they really don't know. They don't know how people are transmitting it. They don't know where it's coming from. I found out today that we have two cases in our hospital. So oh, wow. Wow. The stuff just hit the fan, so yeah. stuff got real. Yeah. yeah. However, um, it's not much more that you can really do except to, you know, maintain your own health, mm -hmm. wash your hands, and keep your hands out of your face and mouth. Yeah, yeah. I was talking to a friend of mine over the weekend, and... You don't realize how much you touch your face. It was it was interesting. We posted on our um, Instagram this woman. She was official and she was talking about you know how to protect yourself from coronavirus. She's talking about keeping your hands out of your face, and then she proceeds to lick her her finger to turn the page. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's just you just don't realize you're doing it. You know what I mean? You don't realize you're doing no, it. No, you don't. But I will say I've been you know you should have always been washing your hands in the first place. But I've really been washing my hands a lot. Like. You know, when I order takeout or if I, like, I had food delivered to me the other day, you know, I got the bag, came in the house, and I washed my hands before I ate, you know. You just have to take those extra steps, you know, because we yeah, don't know. With me being, clinical, me being clinical, I wash my hands all the time anyway. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I, I, I was joking around with them, and I told them, you'll be watching me walk out the building with a pair of gloves on like, to go home in. Mm -hmm. like, just to be out in the street until I get home. I would say some. Uh, I was at uh, the store the other day. <laughs> the other day, I had to go there for work, and this woman was beside me, and she had on a mask, and her phone rang, and she took the mask off, answered it, then put it back on. I thought that was so funny to be on the wall. And your phone is the biggest yes. barrier that there is. Uh huh. Uh, yeah. Because it touches your face and your hands. How about mm -hmm. that? Yep. Yep. Well, Doctor Drew. Um, he is very upset with the way that the media has been covering the coronavirus. Um, you know, he said in our country, we only had 14 deaths. And he said that's very of, of low doses of people compared to the people who are um, catching the flu. And he said that mm -hmm. he thinks that the media, he said, we're not as people overacting. The media is overacting by, you know, causing this fear, um, you know, when we don't really know. Uh, the full story and that people are dying every day from the flu as opposed to dying from the, uh, you know, from coronavirus. Do you think he has a point? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. Um, simply because uh, part, the, the media has a big role in um, the, the temperature of America. Mm -hmm. I guess the temperature of people, it yeah. really gauges you know, your anxiety level. Yeah. And if you don't feed into everything that they tell you, and, and you have to feed into it because you need the education, but they do put hype on some of that stuff. I mean, mm -hmm. really. Um, so, I mean, try to use discernment when listening to the news. Yeah. Um, educate yourself. You know, Google some stuff. Look online. Don't just believe everything you're told. Uh, one thing that I want to mention that a lot of people, I still see a lot of people do, Please, when you when you're at the merchants um, out shopping, stop giving people your credit card. Mm, yeah. Tell them to punch in, you know, put the swipey thing on the counter, and you'll swipe it through yourself. You know, maybe uh, let them see it so they can punch in your numbers, but stop putting it in their hand. Yeah, that's true. These little things we have to think about that we, you know, we necessarily didn't before. You know what I mean? About the and an, and another thing that I've adopted too is the knuckles. So many times we have to touch public things, mm -hmm. like if you go to the ATM machine. A lot of things are automated, like when you check out of a grocery store, like the self checkout. Uh, I use this thing now called the knuckle punch. I don't use my finger, like yeah. the fingerprint part. I use my knuckle, and I'll do it that way. Mm. Instead of using it like the palm of my hand. That's true. That's true. You even see like one of these talk shows. You see a lot of people now. They're not shaking hands with the audience anymore or even with the guest mm -hmm. they're yeah. you know doing the elbow yeah. or the or the fist or you know the fist bump um people aren't playing with it you know um but yeah so everyone please wash your hands and do what you have to do 
But moving forward, so shortly after Kobe Bryant's death, Gail King found herself in the middle of a whirlwind of controversy uh, when she decided to bring up his past sexual assault allegations while interviewing Lisa Leslie. Now, the backlash uh, from her questioning was immediately in extreme. Well, now she has revealed that what the experience was like in a new interview with Oprah Winfrey. Uh, People reports that on March 7th, during the last stop of Oprah Winfrey's 2020 vision, uh, Your Life in Focus tour in Denver, Colorado, Oprah interviewed her best friend, Gail, about the backlash, especially um, the death threats and harsh comments and various attacks at at her journalist integrity. Gail recalled how things were very painful to deal with and the follow-up happened and she's what she had to say. She said, I had I have moved on. Is there a scab? Yeah. But I have moved on. I have put my game face in my big girl pants because I never lost sight of who I was, what I believe in, and my in- intention. I never lost sight of that. But it certainly was a learning curve and was very painful. I think that we can disagree politically, we can disagree socially if you want to, but I think the hum- humanity uh should prevail always. I think we still have to figure out a way to navigate that with each other. That we can disagree, and you can be mad at even me, but you can't speak to me the way I was spoken to and threatened. As you remember, um, Snoop, Snoop Doggy Dogg is one of her harsh, harshest critics, um, but he apologized for his comments on Jada Pinkett Smith's the Red, Tar- Red, Red Table Talk, uh, her show. Do you, what do you think about her reaction? Um, I think that that was um, an educated response. I mm. think that it was fair. Yeah. I think she spoke her truth. Um, and she's right. Um, however, I, I do feel a need to say that some people can only respond in the scope of their intelligence. I'll yeah. say it like that. Mm-hmm. People cannot respond in an intellectual way if they don't possess, possess the, the intellectual acumen. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that you have to allow for that. Like my mom used to always tell me, consider the source. Right. You can consider the source. You can kind of like shrug it off. Yeah. It doesn't bite as much. Yeah. You consider the source. Yeah. 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 I think, you know, she obviously had time to think about it because, you know, it's been a while since it all happened. I'm sure she got to sit Mm -hmm. with it. Um, Mm-hmm. And I'm glad she said it was a learning curve, you know, because we is I don't care how old you are, you still can learn, you know. Um, yeah. And I'm glad, but she said she never lost sight of who she was, even though she may have made this mistake. Um, you know, it was something that she could learn from. But we, yeah, but we still have to stop tearing each other down. You know, we make a mistake. You know what I mean? Use it as an opportunity to grow and learn. Um, and hopefully, mm-hmm. that's something that she was able to do in that moment. You know. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, well, our last story. So races are just running rampant in 2020. And an Indiana Olive Garden had to clean up shop after a customer was out of line. So pretty much NBC News uh, reports that this uh, woman, she was at, she was at this white lady, she was at um, Olive Garden with some friends, including two kids. Um, and there were two black servers were waiting on her. And she yelled out to the manager that she wanted a white uh, server. And the manager complied. And so the young lady who was serving her, she was 16 years old, she started crying. And a man who was uh, another, uh, you know, uh, uh, customer, excuse me, he was there and he was disturbed, just watching, he was there with his wife and he took the Facebook to complain about it and to, um, and his post was shared over 1,500 times. And he felt like that the woman had no one that had her back. And he was saying how diverse the restaurant, like, you know, the workers there, it was a very diverse environment. He was shocked that the manager um, complied with her, with the uh, customer's request to have a, have a non-black person, um, you know, taking care of her. Um, Olive Garden later did an investigation. They fired that, um, fired that, that manager. Um, for, you know, for making those, for, for, you know, complying with the customer's, uh, you know, request. What do you, I mean, this is 2020. <laughs> 20, I mean, yeah. why don't we just go back into segregation already? Oh Let's just gosh. go ahead and just separate and segregate whites only. We can even go back to being called colored. Let's yeah. just be called colored 
and we'll have our own water fountains. We'll have our own businesses. Just, just do that already. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. And then to do that to a well, first of all, to do a period, but especially do it to a teenage young girl, you're showing her this is this experience she has to have when she's just trying to work at 16 years old. I mean, it's horrible. I mean, the message really should have been to ask that woman and her brood to yep, leave to go uh, because we do not uh, condone that type of behavior. Yep, yep. But I think Olive Garden did the, the right decision. I, I hate to see that manager get fired, but made a very poor decision. And, he made uh, a dumb call. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Well, that's hot topics. Miss Parker wasn't with us tonight, but you know, last week was her birthday, her engineer's birthday. So we're wishing them a continued uh, uh, birthday. And uh, Chica, I'll see you in movie reviews. Yes, sir. All right, right back after this.
I've never been one to hate, but when I think of all you did when you was all up in my crib, it kind of made me feel away. Now I feel away. I had your back since day one. I never let you hit the ground, but you was really kind of selfish. Should've known you was a clown. You was real sneaky with it, always going through my phone. I hope you found what you was looking for, cause now I'm really gone. And I'm never looking back now, cause that shit was wack. You was really talking crazy, even tried to call me lazy. You forget who feeding you, you forget who getting food. Should've let your ass off, cause I wasn't in the mood. But I tried to play it cool, then you thought I was a fool. Trying to be someone you're not. Welcome back to the Stephen Knight Show. Our guest tonight uh, is an actor out of Philly who recently made appearances in the Philly-based film called League 215, a stage play called A Lustful Temptation, and a short film called Close Call. Please help me welcome the talented Fernando Reyes. Welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. So tell us, how did you get started working in uh, in, in film and in, in plays? Uh, I mean, I guess acting was always a, a passion of mine, but I mm-hmm. never really acted on it. And um, I really wanted to get into directing and screenwriting. Okay. But um, but the one way that I was always told that it's a great way to learn how to get into the industry is to pretty much learn background work, learn how to get on the stage, yeah. learn how uh-huh. to learn how to familiarize yourself with on the set. So I started out just going, just I was, you know, let me just let me just go for acting and see how I feel about it. So I started going out there doing student films, and I actually enjoyed it. I actually really, really liked it. So I, I read a lot of books on it, read a lot of videos on, watched a lot of videos on it, and also um, I'm planning on taking classes so that way I could just strengthen my my craft. Yeah. But I mean, I, I played with it, I had fun with it, and you know, this this is where I want to be, and then me just knowing that. My my dreams are achievable, and seeing people around me doing the same thing, I'm like, you know, if they can do it, I can do it. Most so definitely, I just, I just went for it. Yeah, yeah, and I can imagine um, the fact that you've already picked up projects, you're doing projects. What has been your your favorite role so far? Um, I wouldn't. I would like to say out of the box, but I haven't had a character like that. Okay. Yet. Uh-huh. But um. I'm open minded, but if I can if I can play anyone, the more complex the character is, that's that's how I would wanna that's what I would wanna do. Yeah. Because it'll 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 help me venture out to, to new areas and it'll challenge myself 
challenged me to see how I can how I can play it off and what I will learn from it afterwards. Right, right. Are there any roles that you wouldn't take on? Do you think that you wouldn't you wouldn't mess with? Um, probably. I mean, I, I don't want to say the, the stereotypical catcher because I'm Hispanic. Like, I don't yeah, want to do that right, typical yeah. gangster in, in a dicky suit and a tank top. Uh-huh. Uh, my <laughs> boss, I'm not. Yeah, like a, like a my boss, I'm not opposed to it, or or, or like a my, or like a cartel boss, I'm not opposed to it. Okay, okay. What do you see if you can have your dream role? What does that look like for you? Honestly, um. I was always, and this this is gonna sound very funny and childish, and I always ask if someone asks me this, mm. ask me this, uh, this this would be my answer. Um, there's an anime called Dragon Ball Z, uh-huh. and they they made a very disrespectful version in the early 2000s. Okay, and if, if they <laughs> if they were to make a very respectable one uh, in the near future, I would like to play the character called Vegeta or oh. a very famous. Um, Hispanic icon. Okay. I would like to do something like that. That'd be dope. You know, we're seeing a lot more, especially in recent years, more um, diversity on screen. Um, You don't see a lot of, like, uh, Hispanic-driven films. Uh, Correct me if I'm wrong. What do you think, why do you think we have that lack of diversity when it comes to the Hispanic community? Um, It's it's cash typing, you know, and... um, I know Chicago and John, uh, there was some Hispanic actors in Chicago actually yeah. speaking out about that, and oh, good. also Hispanic characters in in LA. And I'm hoping to do the same thing here in Philly yeah. because it's like I was uh, speaking with uh, my manager and also a friend of mine. I'm like, you know, Hispanic actors can be more. We can be loving fathers. We can be loving husbands. We can exactly. be lawyers. We can be doctors. We can be detectives. We don't always have to be cast typed as the Latin lover. Or, or the gangster, or the the husband that abuses his wife. We, right. we're not, we're, that's not what we. That's not what every Hispanic is. Yeah. And I want I want to shed light on that. I want to shed light that Hispanics um, can be more than that. Because I know African Americans, they in the rise of, of Hollywood, exactly. they had that struggle, and then yeah. and then now they got their time to be whatever they want to be. Mm-hmm. I want to mm-hmm. do the same thing for Hispanics. Exactly, and even with the Asian community, with Crazy Rich Asians and films like that, you know. We're starting exactly. to see more diversity, but I think it needs to be across, you know, the different ethnicities. You know what I mean? Um, of course. Yeah. So, you know, we've heard a lot in recent uh, times about the Me Too movement, Time's Up, um, you know, women being taken advantage of on sets and whatnot. Do you see, have you seen that or heard of that, like in the communities that you work in, that you are hearing women still having to deal with those issues or... And what's been your experience with that? Um, I mean, I, I guess in some still at the bottom uh, of the whole acting stuff, but I'm still moving forward. Yeah, I personally have not come across that, mm-hmm. but um, I, I always keep up on Hollywood stories, and you know, they they said some things that, that of course, are rumors or they might be rumors. You know, James Franco was the type that did that. Yeah. A lot of people who produce their own films and people who want to get a shot at their own films, of course, they're going to try. Like I, uh, to me, the rumors are less proven than, than I can't really judge. But I, I also wouldn't put it past me that you know there are people out there that are like that. Yeah. Because especially since, since you look at the the producer now that's that's um, that's going on trial and 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 facing oh, her, charges now from all the all the all the yeah, allegations against him. Uh-huh. Yeah. 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 So, where do you see what in in ten years from now? In a perfect world, where would, you, where would your career be uh, then? Where do you see it? Um, God willing, uh, and uh, an actor, an established actor that's mm-hmm. high up there, setting setting the roadmap for other Hispanics and encouraging other people to to follow, to feed their dream. That's that's my analogy. That I, I want to encourage people to feed their dream. Yeah. It's okay to follow it, but then even some people will follow it. They lose track. But if you feed it, if you water it, if you if you if you just pursue it nonstop like you would yourself on an everyday basis, you'll you'll achieve it. Yeah, that's true. Do you still want to um, direct and be behind the um, lens as well? Yes, eventually. Yeah, yeah. What, what because the... I, I do want to start. I okay. do want to start. I'm sorry. I do want to establish myself in in the industry, and then once once I'm able to bring some money in and make those right connections, yeah, I would like to to tell my own stories and tell other people's stories and direct them too. Yeah, yeah. 
What for you? Um, is there one that's more challenging um, being in a play versus being in film? Is it is it equally as challenging, or is it just one come easier? Um, they, they they both have their pros and cons. Yeah, um, I I enjoy them both. The commitment aspect is, for a stage play is like you know spending that prolonged time rehearsing. Mm-hmm. It's just as tedious as. Um, when you're on screen, it's like how many takes until you get it right, yeah, or like yeah. you just get it right, you know? Because mm-hmm. like um, you'll feel good about the first one, but someone might do something wrong, and then four takes later, you feel crappy about this one, but someone else did it really good, right? Um, so they they all they both have their have their pros and cons. I, yeah. I enjoy them both. Like with the camera, you have to know that you're working the people or the millions of people on the other side. When yeah. you're on a stage play. You're working the people that's right in yeah, front of you. Yeah, it's true. That's true. Do you, um, I know you mentioned that you did a lot of research and studying and, you know, reading books. Um, why is it, why was that important? Because some people, they think they can just act. They can just go out there and act. What was that important for you to get that, you know, to do that research, to get that education, you know, even if self talk Why was that so important to you? Um, because I, I just can't show up in a room and someone tells me play a lawyer and then I'll act like I think I know what an act a lawyer is like right. when you never sat in, in the room with one. Yeah, I, I watch movies and of course they do a great impression of one, but am I am I gonna am I gonna make you believe that I'm I can really be a lawyer? In yeah. real life? am I gonna make you believe that I can really be a doctor in real life? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. And it's it, it's like it's I I think I read it in a book. It was uh. Uh, seven tips for an actor, or something along those lines. Don't quote me on it. It was it was a short book. Okay. Um, they said that when you're acting, if you're an audition, or if you're on set, or if you're on stage, every person is looking through a keyhole. So let's just say if you walk through a door, you look through a keyhole, and I'm playing my part. I'm giving my lines. I'm giving my dialogue. My audition. Mm-hmm. Would you believe I'm the person I'm portraying if you if you look through that keyhole? Mm. And that's snapped on to me like, damn, how, yeah. how can I make people so, like, how can I sell this? How can I make people believe it? And I got to think people are watching me through a keel. Yeah, that, that's, that's actually a great tip. All you up-and-coming uh, actors, pay attention to that one. That was a good one. That was a good nugget. <laughs> <laughs> so um, are you working on anything now? You have anything coming up? Um, I, I know for a close call, uh, they're going to, Show it at an event called Five Short Films here in Philadelphia. They're going to okay. show a uh, close call there. It's April 25th, I believe. Okay. I also got casted in two small projects in Philly, one called uh, Film Products, and also, I'm um, sorry, I got casted in four, another stage play and another um, another film. So one's called The Gunner, one's called Philly Narcotics, and another one's called Deep Undercover. So everyone could stay tuned for those. Most definitely. Congratulations on that. And this, yeah, yeah, thank you. And I, I forgot the name of the stage play. I'm sorry. So, but I, I'll, I'll let you know. But I, I'm looking forward to it, man. As long as, long as I know I'm progressing, I, yeah. I, I feel successful. That's what it's about. That's exactly what it's about. Where can we keep up with you and, and follow your career and follow your projects? Um, My Facebook is Fernando Reyes. And um, Reyes is R-E-Y-E-S because some people, when they hear me say it, they think I say Rios. Uh. But it's Reyes, <laughs> R-E-Y-E-S. And my Instagram is F-J-R-J-R official. All right. Fernando Reyes, man, thank you so much for joining us. Continued success. And uh, I look forward to seeing you on the, in the big screen very soon. <laughs> yeah, I'm looking forward to it too, man. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right. For more information about Fernando Reyes, you can go to our website, the Stephen, o- Stephen Knight Show dot com, And we'll be right back after this. Loving me wrong, I'm tired, I'm tired, and I'm moving on. You feel me, you feel me, no, I'm like a bum. Stop loving me, loving me, loving me wrong. Why you keep, why you keep loving me wrong? I'm tired, I'm tired, and I'm moving on. You feel me, you feel me, no, I'm like a bum. Stop loving me, loving me, loving me. I was with you, but living a lie. I was giving you, giving you life. You were loving me wrong for a while. Stop.
Stop filling my head and filling my tank. Ain't I was so dumb to stay in the fence. Cause I was so lost and stuck in your maze. Stuck in the sex, was stuck in the love. I let you dishonor my name and my love. I let you dishonor my pride like a fool. Denying myself just so I could choose you. I was with you but living a lie. Loving me, loving me, loving you me You were fake and foul and wasted out I can, I will, I won't allow you to change my soul Or change my sound So carry the bed that you slept around You crept around when there's no doubt STDs distributed out You sold me a novel then wrote me out I cannot, I will not, I won't allow Why you keep, why you, why you keep, why you keep loving me wrong I'm tired, I'm tired, so I'm moving on You feel me, you feel me, no, I'm like a bomb Stop loving me, loving me, loving me Why you keep, why you keep loving me fake? I've been wrote you off, you're fucking replaced. And this is the end of the song for the fake. Stop loving the ones who will love you. I was with you, but living a lie. Fight, huh? I got OG and they owe me fighters. Huh? 
I never turn my back up on the trap that might have huh? That hustle with no hand out, that's what they got you, huh? That means I ain't saw me, now you can see me, huh? Disappear and reappear like Aladdin Genie, huh? Mm, play them diamonds, shine them diamonds, gleam, huh? All black phantom Batman, Michael Keaton, huh? Boy, I'm good with them toys, ay, Morgan Freeman, ay, Scarface, Al Pacino, ay, Willie Bean, huh? Came a long way from doing shit. Slick and steamy, praying daily with my team, I in agreement. You didn't know, you didn't know, trip is all, it's all on me. Anyway, hit a taste, hit your tie, wipe your face, you got the sauce, it's dripping on me. It's all on me, get big, get taste. And I know you look good, but I'm dripping sauce, hey. It's going well, Stephen. How are you guys? It was good. You know, the weather's finally getting nice. So we'll uh, spend a little bit of time outside and just try to enjoy it. And hopefully it continues. How about you? Mm -hmm. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, she knows. She knows. Uh, now, now, the question I have, though, is your, your phone has automatically adjusts for daylight savings time, right? So what, what, what happened? Ah. Uh. Holy moly, wow, okay. <laughs> well, well, hopefully in a week she's good. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. So more fun without you, I guess. <laughs> All right. Well, I'll kick it off. So this weekend I saw Onward, which is the latest uh, Disney Pixar animated film. And this movie is about this uh, kind of suburban fantasy world. So in the trailer and the premise, uh, magic existed a long time ago, but then technology came along and people started using technology and magic was kind of long forgotten. So these two brothers discover a wand and a possible way to uh, bring back their dead father one last time for like a, a 24 hours. So they go on a quest to kind of find that spell and bring everything back. Um, and... It was, it was really good, actually. I was impressed by it. You know, it's definitely, it fits that mo model of kind of, you know, if you want to watch teenagers on an adventure, so think of like maybe, not, and not as extreme, but maybe something like a Goonies or something like that where you have these two uh, kids trying to find something new and do something different. And this is a world where magic exists and the characters are different. There are pixies. There are el the main characters are elves. Uh, there's centaurs and manticores and all these kind of fantasy elements. So it feels like um, almost like a D and D world or one of those fantasy worlds, but it's well done. It's a great story. They got some good voices to uh, be characters. So Tom Holland, Chris Pratt, uh, Julia Louis Dreyfus, Octavia Spencer are kind of our main four leads in it. And uh, yeah, overall it's, if you're looking for a good kind of, Another Disney Pixar movie that will uh, warm the heart and have some good jokes, then definitely check this one out. 
Awesome. Sounds good. I love a good adventure fantasy film. Yeah, yeah. This one does it and a really good job, too. Good. So the film that I saw uh, was called, well, is called Premature, and it's um, done by a friend of the show. We actually had him on the show some time back in our many years, or maybe I think he was on in our first year, uh, with Shot Ernesto Green. And he um, is, you know, he did a film, a award-winning film called Gun Hill Road. And um, he's back with Premature. Uh, it's an indie film. Uh, it's actually written by the star of the film, uh, Zora Howard. And uh, Mr. Green actually did the screenplay, and he directed it, and he produced it. Um, I, I'm going to just start off by saying, so far, where were we? We're in March. So far, this is the best film that I've saw this year. Nice. This film reminds me of Poetic Justice, but better. And better in the sense of that it has more grit than Poetic Justice. Not taking anything from John Singleton, Poetic Justice was a wonderful movie. But looking at this movie, and it doesn't have any notable stars in the cast, and it holds its weight. Um, I think part of Poetic Justice hype was that you had Janet and then you had Tupac starring in a film. Would you still be interested in seeing that film if there weren't any big names attached to seeing that film? Would you go see that film knowing that um, it was a low budget and it was an independent film? Would you go see that film if there wasn't a big studio connected to marketing that film. This would be that film. Um, I cried a couple times in this movie. Uh, it's basically a, a love story uh, in the heart of uh, Harlem. And it's about a young girl who is college bound. And this is her summer before she actually leaves to go to college. And she falls in love with a young man that's not from Harlem. He's from uh, the South, I believe. Um, I, 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 I'm at a loss for words because the, mo the movie moved me so much. And again, I say it's an independent film, so if you're going to go see it, go see it now if you want to see it in theaters. And yes, it's definitely worth the ticket price to go see it in theaters. And how many times do I tell you to do that? I really don't ever tell you to go see a movie in theaters. Mm -hmm. But go see this movie in the theater. It's worth it. It's it's you know it's that whole having the popcorn and the soda sitting there and getting the whole ambiance of the theater. Check it out. Um, I think so far they grossed uh, twenty two thousand dollars. Again, this is an indie film. It's not going to bring in millions and millions of dollars, but it definitely carries its weight in content. Um, you definitely will walk away feeling something from this film. Uh, again, that's Rashad Ernesto Green. And he's one of those directors for me at this point, no matter what he does, I'm going to go check it out because he's solidified himself with me as far as his content is concerned. That's just how I feel about it. Um, yeah, so check it out. Nice. So, yeah, and I just want to uh, sidebar also. Um, you know, it's interesting because a lot of movies opened lower than expected this weekend, and we're finally kind of seeing the uh, effect of the coronavirus on yeah the, the market. I was, and they I was, said the Chinese, I, the Chinese, uh, Chinese movie industry has already negative or lost two billion dollars because wow. everyone's staying home in quarantine, you know, or not going out to the theaters. So yeah, it's, it's an interesting time of the year for the films. I was going to get there a little later when talking about films coming up, um, but mm. since you brought it up, uh, one of the films on my list to check out in the future is No Time to Die is the new James Bond film. So they pushed the release date back for that sim simple reason. They don't want to lose money for the coronavirus, so they pushed the opening back. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're waiting and seeing when we're going to get our next James Bond film, which I hear is going to be awesome. So now I'm a little yeah, upset yeah. because <laughs> I need this. I, I've been calling it the Roro. I need this Roro to go away. I need them to find a <laughs> cure and eradicate it. I need it gone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because uh, it's, it's probably going to push a lot of other stuff back too. Yeah, yeah. How about that? Um, so 
The Outsider on HBO finished up last night. That was the final episode of the season. And wow, we. If you have not watched this series, please check it out. It is so good, y'all. It really is. Stephen King and Jason Bateman are in their bag on this one. Check it out. Um, Hunters, again, on um, Amazon, Amazon Prime. That is such a good one. Um, and they're telling you some serious facts in this show, too. They're sliding in a little truth. So check it out. Where did those Nazis disappear to? Hmm, I wonder where. Um, if anyone's into anime, uh, I love this series on Netflix. It's called, it's called Castlevania. It's an anime cartoon uh, based upon Dracula and this whole sorcery fantasy world of vampires and sorcerers, and it's just really interesting. It's very, very good if you're into that type of stuff. I'm a geek that way. I live for it. I think I brushed through. It's only like maybe like five, six episodes, but they're really, really good. Check it out. Yeah, I've heard of... You've watched Castlevania before? No, but I want to because every time the season comes out because they're up to three, everyone says it's a great show and it's like one of Netflix's mm-hmm. best animated series. And I, I do want to watch it, but I'm glad uh, I'm glad that you're you're confirming that it's still it's really good. Oh yeah, yeah, and it ke- just keeps getting better. I'm almost finished uh, this third season. I think I maybe have like maybe two more episodes to go. Oh, nice. uh, it's just so much content on TV now. Like I'm trying to absorb stuff really quick to get it out the way. Um, I'm in the mm-hmm. middle of watching Lock and Key on Netflix as well, which is awesome. Um, again, fantasy, uh, magic, um, uh, supernatural. Yeah, that's what I live for. Check that out too. Uh, they okay, gotta okay. have us. I finished that. Uh, that's the series uh, about uh, the black entertainment industry, movie inter- movie and film uh, industry in particular. Um, that's really good and educational. I learned some great things on there, uh, some history about certain films and uh, who produced what and where money came from just for certain films that uh, probably would not have gotten made if certain people didn't step in and produce and why we have the resurgence of um, what they're calling the black renaissance in film. Definitely check that out. Um, Westworld is back on the 15th of this month for their uh, third season. And Insecure is back on April 12th. Nice. Have you... Have you uh, you're looking forward to... Go ahead. Well, I, I will say, have you watched, and it's on HBO also, the Av- that Avenue 5 show? It's kind of like that sci-fi comedy that... <laughs> so I've seen a previews show. for that, and... Every time I see previews, I'm like, mm, yeah, no, I'm not going to do it. So it, it the previews, <laughs> don't, they don't grab me to make me want to watch it. I keep saying I'm going to watch eight episodes to see, you know, if it's going to catch. But um, yeah. I am watching Curb Your Enthusiasm. And also, since we're talking about HBO shows, I've mentioned it before, but there's a documentary uh, called Mech Millions where it's about the – um, the McDonald's monopoly the scandal. Mac- exactly. Oh my God! Who knew? Who knew? Yeah. That the people that were winning those millions, it was a scam, and it goes through the whole FBI, you know, investigation on how they cracked the case, and who was doing what, and who was getting the millions, and where it came from, and what happened to them. Like it's really good. It plays out like a really good, good, good soap opera. It really does. Yeah. Check it out. I will. I will say I, I watched the first episode, and um, I don't know if I'll finish watching it. My wife will probably uh, finish watching it because she's entertaining and enough, entertained in it enough. I think, and you can tell me if I my, my theory is right because you, I think you finished uh, the series. They could have just done this in like two to three episodes. I feel like the whoever is producing and directing this is really stretching this out because yeah, they are. They I feel like there's a lot of filler. They are stretching it out. But, I mean, it wouldn't make for good TV if they didn't stretch I it out. Know, I mean, and the I whole know, thing is but... the, the big cliffhangers at the end. You know, it's just <sighs> like – and if you really t- think about HBO and how they do their documentaries, they don't just do an hour documentary. They stretch them out. It's like a little mini series. I know, I know. I, I, I want to get to the meat of it sometimes, and I, just, I don't want to hear the guy talk about 
how he had to wear a golf short because that's what <laughs> assistant directors or whatever do. And I'm like, all right, I don't need to hear this part of the well, story. Well, give me. I guess so part, anyway, that's just a personal complaint. Part of the plot with HBO and what they're doing is they throw these shows on to fill the space before they put on the blockbusters. They can't put on blockbusters mm. right behind a blockbuster, so they have to put these filler shows in, which I – I appreciate because sometimes the filler shows might not be something that I really want to see, and it gives me a break to catch up on other stuff that I want to watch, and I don't have to yeah. constantly be glued to HBO because between – no, I'm just going to say straight up. HBO probably is the best outlet for the, the, the content that I love. They're, they're picking out the best for me. Oh, nice. Okay. Yeah. And I love the little break in between the major shows. So this show is going on after Outsiders just ended, and then we're going to have Westworld start up on the 15th. That's just enough time for me to absorb maybe two shows <laughs> off Netflix and maybe jump over to Amazon real quick and then come back to HBO. It's too much content on TV right now. Who would have ever thought that we would say something like that? Because I remember a point in time where there was nothing on TV. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Well, that's good to know. Um, and I think you were about to ask me what, what I'm looking forward to in the movie. So yes. there's a couple on the list. Um, this Bloodshot movie, which is kind of uh, based on this comic book character, but it's a, it's a Vin Diesel vehicle. It looks like it could be interesting. It looks like a fun, mindless kind of action movie. Um, that's, that's this week. And then Mulan at the end of the month, which, again, I'm hoping they don't push back because – Obviously, yeah. the Chinese, the Chinese uh, yeah. movie industry is very big, and Mulan is going to be their like huge market for them. So um, yeah. we'll see what happens there. But yeah, those are the top two on my radar. Yeah, Mulan's on my list as well. Bloodshot, meh, not so much. Um, I think Bloodshot is Vin Diesel's uh, grab at you know being a superhero. You know, he, yeah, you know, it's like the Triple X series, right? Yeah. I think that he should go back to Riddick, Chronicles of Riddick. I think he should go mm -hmm. back to that. That's probably going to be his cha-ching. That's going to be yeah. his moneymaker. That and the Fast and Furious. Vin Diesel, yep. hang on. You know, hang on to them. I, I really don't know about this bloodshot. I, I wasn't really too interested when I saw the trailer. It's like, eh, so what? Yeah, and that's but, what I was kind I of know. expecting, but yeah, we'll see. Um, postcard, The Postcard Killings is on my list. Uh, Emperor yeah. is on my list. Um, Issa Rae and Lovebirds, uh, that comes out just as Insecure is coming back. And in, in a side note, Insecure actually forgave a year so that Issa could do these two films, The Photograph and Lovebirds. So I, The Photograph was good, and hopefully Lovebirds will be as good because then that way I can justify her taking a year off to film these films and leave us in the lurch for Insecure. So numbers better be good, Issa. And, um, of course, No Time to Die with James Bond, which is pushed back. And uh, My Spy, which I think is going to be one of those cute family movies. I, I, I think that'll uh, uh, be pretty decent for, you know, family viewing. Nice. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, that's good to know. But doesn't that just get up underneath your skin? Like when you invest, you sit there and you waste, not I'm going to say you waste your time because you don't know you're wasting it at the time, but you're sitting there and you're, you know, spending your time invested into this film and then you get to the end and it's like, ah! Oh. <laughs> Mm. Right, I'll be sure to avoid it. Well, 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 before, yep. we, before we leave, I just want to shout out one of my clients, Anvar. Anvar is an MMA fighter. He's out of the Discipline MMA gym uh, in um, 
Mayfair, Pennsylvania, and he has a bout on March 14th. Good luck to you, Anvar, and um, kick his butt. Underneath 
my skin and it's every touch How you take my love and bring it back to life You bring it back to life And I'm breathing in every single sound you make I can feel your words all in the air With your voice making my heart beat your soul is all I see It's like the rest of the world is not there It feels like time slows down And every breath is getting longer I feel my heart sinking to the ground Every weakness is getting stronger And as I'm falling I can feel you lift me up underneath your wings And it's every touch how you take my love and bring it back to life You bring it back to life I feel your fire burn underneath my skin And it's every touch how you take my love and bring it Back to life, you bring it back to life. And as I'm falling down, I feel you lift me up underneath your wings. And it's every touch, how you take my love and bring it back to life. You bring it back to life. I feel your fire burn underneath my skin. And it's every touch, how you take my love and bring it back to life. Yo, what's good, man? This is Keith Jacob checking in for the one time. And this is my new single, Saucy. You heard it here first on the Stephen Knight Show. Well, that's our show. Special shout out to Fernando Reyes for joining us tonight. Continued success to you. Hope you all have a great week. And we'll talk again next Monday. Peace and good night. Get there.